So, hello and welcome to episode three of the Secrets of the BBFC podcast. My name's Tom, I am your host as ever, and um, just want to cover a couple of things before we start very quickly. So, this episode was originally supposed to be covering contemporary BBFC issues, but um, due to a couple of technical difficulties, I had to push that episode back a bit. Um, but nevertheless, I, I wanted to do an episode and I thought it would be good to do one about James Furman because obviously he's the most infamous director or secretary of the BBFC. And I thought, yeah, let's do an episode on that. Um, so the guest who I was supposed to do the episode with isn't here. So instead I have the excellent Rob, also known as Bobatron, who hey, was hey. actually on the podcast episode. So, hey, Rob. Hi, hi. How are you doing? Not bad. How about you? Well, I can't complain. I am absolutely fine. Absolutely right as rain. That sounds brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess, well, where to begin, really? I mean, there's there's an awful lot of stuff to to cover in terms of firm. And I mean, obviously, he was secretary of the BBFC for a um, quarter of a century. Yeah, pretty, pretty much quarter of a century. He um, I think he handed in his resignation in 1998 um, after he started in 1975, I believe. And during that four time, or five, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And um, let's just say that during that time, he was a very controversial. Had a, yeah. Had a bit of a mixed reception, depending on who you asked. Um, so it, I, I, I saw a comment that sums it up pretty well. Too liberal for conservatives and too conservative for liberals. In fact, to be honest to me, that just raises more questions than it could ever answer. But um, because if he's, um, yeah, because in the, in the eyes of people like Mary Whitehouse, yeah, he was incredibly liberal. He was basically uh, just a little bit too permissive, which just begs the question, what in the fuck were the previous ones like? <laughs> yeah 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 i mean you had um you had people like stephen murphy who um <clears throat> i think he uh one of his final films was jaws and the only thing he had an issue with with someone was someone um the image of someone spitting blood yeah quint when I he mean, gets uh, uh sorry have you seen jaws um i've seen bits of it all right well i use a thing i used to watch growing up quite a lot but it yeah there was a the uh, one of the characters, Quint, when he gets eaten, uh, blood does sort of come out a lot of his mouth. And yeah, they did want that cut out. But the secretary, in order to achieve an A rating, the secretary uh, or chairman, I can't remember what the position was, overruled and said, no, it's an uncut A rating, which was meant to become a PG. So, uh, Christ, times have changed. Yeah, times have really changed. I mean, you, you used to have the kind of you used to have the kind of days when Furman would pass films like Willow at PG. But then again, that's probably a that was with cuts though nowadays. Well, that that was with cuts though, so he doesn't. I don't think he gets too much um, credit for that. I give him more credit for giving a PG to Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean to be to be honest, if 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 that film got a a twelve or a fifteen, there would have been some absolute uproar over it. So, I guess at the time we should be grateful that it got a PG and it got the audience that it probably deserved but well i was eight when it came out so i speak from personal experience um ah, yes. also it was released in 1993 which meant that if it was released 12 at the cinema there's a chance that when it came out in video it could be rated 15 thankfully by the time it did come out in video it was actually 12 was on 12 was available in videos but that's kind of irrelevant obviously if released nowadays it would be a 12 age just like the jurassic world films are yeah the, the jurassic world films uh definitely do seem to warrant their 12 ratings from the very brief section of the first Jurassic World from uh, I've watched. Well, I'd say that they're no worse than the previous Jurassic Park films, but of course, again, just the difference in the time just puts them into the 12A. Yeah, th yeah, definitely. Um, so I, gu I guess one of the things we should talk about is his fixation on weaponry and that's unavoidable yeah 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 that 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 is that is we should unequivocally <laughs> discuss that it's kind of a it's kind of a given with people like Furman um so just a bit of context for those of you who might not be aware of this 
Furman's obsession with weaponry was unparalleled. He had a, a sort of irrational fear of letting people see films with like Nunchaku and Shriyukun and Flick Knives. Well, it's, it's one of the reasons why Enter the Dragon was absolutely shredded to pieces upon its first release because it had no I, and actually it no that wasn't when it, it wasn't when it was originally released that that happened it was when it was released on video that it was shredded to pieces i think of, i think when it first came to a cinema over here he wasn't he hadn't yet taken over so of oh, no, course yeah, it, was, um, it was murphy yeah so they cut out things like neck breaks and everything but the uh the martial arts weaponry was left in and of course Furman we took over I don't know if he cut out the next breaks and everything, but um, or reinstated them. But yeah, all the nunchucks and everything had to be cut right out, and it's, and which does make you a few questions. But yeah, you are correct. He was just absolutely fucking neurotic. I don't know what the term is. Yeah. Paranoid about yeah Eastern martial arts weaponry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's I mean, it's it's particularly it, like inept in in that Bruce Lee was obviously infamous for his nunchaku. So basically, a, a a lot of Western people might not have um known about Bruce Lee's talent had um had the rule for nunchaku not been waived in nineteen ninety eight, I think it was when no, yeah, ninety nine when, when Herman after he left. Was, thank God, and, yeah. Um, well, I grew up a damn bastard. I mean, you were uh, you were the for, you had the uh, fortitude for, fortune of uh, not having to do that. No, I no, I I, I I mean, having said that, you did have um, oh, what was his face, Robin Duval, who did cut um, Romeo Must Die, and that had some sort of Furman esque cuts applied to it. I think one of the cuts was to um, was to a throat shop, which. Um, Pretty tame by today's standards, but still, um, still did seem like something he would cut. So uh, yeah, I mean, it so, was like that was a cut for a, a 15 as opposed to an 18. Obviously, like an uncut 18 would have been available. I mean, hmm. and true, the amount of uh, films that Furman did to start to pass uncut at X and 18 did increase. He, they didn't, but cuts at those ratings didn't completely disappear and there's still a disturbingly high number of films that were cut uh, for X or 18 during his uh, tenure and that was at the cinema when it came on to video oh it was even worse I mean yeah. because he because obviously it will go of course something else we can't uh, avoid when I'm um, talking about him he was a uh, president or chairman I can't remember which position he held of the BBFC when the video recordings act came in yeah and that um let's just say okay let's just say the um that probably the majority of the like hysteria that came around it was from papers like uh shit, the daily fail and, yeah um, sun and the, <laughs> and the sun and the daily star and all of that shit and stuff but then uh, but, but then he had Furman who seemed to have uh like an irrational fear of certain films being screened so one of the films was, of course, Sam Raimi's cult classic, *The Evil Dead*, mm -hmm. which had a bit of a it had a bit of a mixed reception amongst um, amongst examiners at the BBFC when they first saw it because some found it hilarious. I think one person said that they weren't a fan of the horror genre at all and they hadn't laughed as much all year, pretty much. And others were that they they felt like the film um, made them want to vomit which was uh, <laughs> probably a bit of a, a weird reception back, back then as compared to now, because you wouldn't really strike that kind of film as making wanting to make you vomit nowadays. I mean, probably. The remake, on the other hand, from 2013, maybe a bit more, but yeah, yeah that, old, that one back then looks positive, looks just absolutely kitsch by nowadays standards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, something like, something like Robocop, you know, the, um, the scene where, I think it's the scene where the Ed 209 shoots, basically shoots this guy dead. I mean, even in its like X-rated form, it's still pretty hilarious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think Furman had any qualms with Robocop. Well, I, I think he may have only rated the cut R-rated version, though, which he did pass uncut at 18. 
I don't can't remember yeah. when the director's cut came out over here, but it might have been after he got shot, after he left anyways. And of course, Robin Duvall, one of the things he did, the two main things that he did was the restricted 12 rating and say no more cuts at 18. Don't know how well he actually put that through, but it's true that basically he was a lot more lenient than Furman ever was. And to be honest, one of the first things I think uh, happened when Furman actually left was the rest of the exam just went, this guy, and basically got rid of his ban on martial arts weaponry, got rid of the <laughs> ban on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and allowed Exorcist to be released on video. And I think those are two films we kind of need to, uh, we can't help but uh, ad- not address, can't help but address, yeah. uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre and The Exorcist, because Furman's attitude towards the first one, the former Texas Chainsaw, was just snobbery. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, the- I mean, and, and and before and before you, if you're if you're listening to this and you think that we're we're overstating snobbery, I, like we're really not. What so he was um, so I'll tell you a bit of a story. He was in um, I think he was in a some kind of London cinema, and after the film had finished, his remark was this: "It's all right for you middle-aged cinephiles, but imagine if a factory worker from Manchester were to see this." Yeah, I mean. That- that was that was his remark. So you can imagine what it would be like for those people in Manchester having such a condescending little prick running the BBFC when you make when you make that kind of comment. I mean, how how does that help in any way, shape, or form? I have I have no idea. But yeah, yeah, it's it's not a constructive thing to say. It's a it's a nanny stating thing to say. It's a uh, redu- well, reductive. It's probably the nicest thing you can say about it. But um, <laughs> Yeah, but when something like that, with those sort of elitist and out-of-touch opinions, is in control of what you can and can't watch, yeah, it doesn't doesn't bode well, does it? No, I mean, it, to be honest, it doesn't. It doesn't really. I mean, it didn't bode there well then. It it certainly hasn't aged well now. I mean, looking at some of the stuff he he did cut, you think, really, like what? Like that is what. I mean, it, particularly considering people who lived in the eighties might not notice a big difference from then now. Like with, but with regards to Furman's era now, it's it's far cry pretty much from what it was. Well, I mean, Eraser when it came out, that was a cut for its eighteen rating at the cinema. It was then re- trying to be downgraded to fifteen on video, so it had a bit of even more cuts to the point it was practically unwatchable now. Of course, the whole film's a completely uncut 15 rating. As is, and also the same can be said for Lethal Weapon 2, which, well, that was quite heavily cut for a 15 out of cinema. They tried to bring it out uncut at 18 on video, but Furman still demanded two scenes be cut for that film. And that's now an uncut 15. So yeah, we have, the, the way things have just changed back then mm. to now, uh, it's mind-boggling, really, especially as someone who's just old enough to remember. Like, so a lot of these action movies would get rated 18 and when I was a kid and everything, but now I was like, no, I'm a 15 now, so it's just clearly... Yeah. Anyway, just Furman was too zealous, so what can I say? Yeah, I mean, I mean, what, what say, really? I mean, you, you make a pretty interesting point in terms of um, Lethal Weapon 2 and Eraser because he, he, had a, he had a particular fixation on action films mm-hmm. and... Um, I, one of the things I probably want to point out is how he was very inconsistent with language in action films. So Die Hard 2 was one of the films that he cut. And obviously at the time you couldn't have that many uses of the word fuck in a, um, in a 15 rated film. So mm-hmm. obviously that had to be reduced. And Point but, Break is another one. Yeah. Point Break is, um, is the other example that, that also had um strong language being cut out and um but one of the problems was that a year after point break was released gang glen gary glenn ross was released which features at least two uses of the word cunt mm-hmm. so and about a hundred or so the, the f-bomb count was in three figures which is usually goes beyond what he would allow but you know carry yeah. on as you were yeah i mean i mean that that's that's um that's definitely something that he would have um he, he would have cut down were it not for the fact that Glengarry Glen Ross is not an action film. Hmm. And it wouldn't appeal to 15-year-olds, so it could got away with an uncut 15, yeah. which makes you ask a question, 
Well, it's not going to appeal for 15 year olds. Why does it need a 15 rating anyway? It just does not like, doesn't really compute when you think about it. But I mean, uh, well, I mean, I mean, you know, to be honest, you can see. Odd thing is, you can kind of see that now. I mean, the film, the film, the best exotic marigold hotel. Uh, sorry, the second best exotic marigold hotel would not have been a PG rating rated film had it been marketed to kids. I mean, that, that in terms of sex references, that is a 12 film any day of the week, I'd say. I mean, it, to be honest, that might be helpful debate, but it seem, it seems more like a 12 than a, than a PG. But yeah, wasn't that you... wasn't that film just kept, didn't that film just come out in 2015? The second best marigold yeah. hotel, yeah, mm, right. Well, it's a Bit after his uh his tenure, I mean, if it was a yeah. PG back then, I think it could probably be a PG now. It could have been that was I don't know what I was rated stateside, probably PG thirteen. I'll check it on a IMDb when I can get a chance. But obviously, I mean, yeah, but back in his day, for all his talk about being overzealous, he was probably much more lenient at U and PG than they were nowadays due to twelve being restricted. Ah, yes, and that's the uh, and that's the next point. It's um. It's time to mention the dreaded Watership Down. Yeah, I mean, fuck me. I do not what, understand. What, 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 what would we... What to say about that? I mean, it's... Um, unusually bloody for a it's got, rated film. Yeah, it's got a lower rating than Frozen. It's, <laughs> it's more violent... Obviously, it's too violent for you. More violent than a too violent for a PG nowadays. It'd be 12A nowadays. Obviously, yeah. stateside, it was rated PG, and a lot of uh, Americans of my age or a bit older say, oh, this is like an old-school PG, and we're just like, yeah, it's uh, you rating over here, but it's not something I can really... I, I'm usually quite a lenient guy, but I can't really get behind that getting ra- rated you. I mean, sure, I can get around Jaws being a PG and Jurassic Park being a PG, arachnophobia... And uh, I can even get Ryan get partially around Star Wars being a U rating. Um, yeah, I mean, not... I, I'd say the only one you. I, I'm not really sure to be honest. I'd say I'd say for the first film is probably quite high PG nowadays. Yeah, but the scene because, where Obi Wan yeah. cuts that guy's arm off. Yeah, 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 and and, the, and there's um unusually bloody U rated scene, but. Yeah, and, and the same goes for Empire, actually. Yeah, same problem. Well, that's a well. Interestingly enough, that is a PG nowadays. Oh yeah, it? yeah, I know. I do know that. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. Um, I did notice that it got re it got bumped up to a PG in 2020. As the same time, Fellowship of Ring got bumped up to a 12A. Again, we know why that was a PG in the first place because 12A didn't exist back then. It was 12. But yeah, I remember when I saw that, I was like, how the fuck is this a PG? But again, that's not Furman era, so I mean... Yeah. Again, though, if we're talking about films that Furman passed for you rating, I've also got to mention E.T. Ah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's another big one. Yeah, I was like, yells, the kid just yells penis breath at the top of his lungs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny, they kept that in for a TV show. I was, I was watching like a bit of it, and I noticed they kept it in. I was like, okay... <laughs> Yeah, but although to be honest, if 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 it was cut out, it would probably be something that there would have been a bit of an uproar in the Daily Mail about. But yeah, that that be that the ironic that the Daily Mail would be against that sort of thing because again, the word shit is mentioned uh, in it. It's quite audibly, um, which is a stronger than the word piss, which was used in um, Watership Down, and then I think goddamn yeah. or douchebag or something was used in in, yeah. in uh, E.T. So it's like, seriously? How the fuck did this get away with a, a U rating? But I, I think it might be bumped up to a PG now, but you can sort of I mean you tell just, again really lenient, surprisingly lenient at the lower ends and um, just at 15 and 18 ridiculously <laughs> strict stringent there. Pardon? Yeah. Ridiculously stringent there yeah, you're right. Yeah of course, there is the old thing about just him being light on animation because we mentioned, yeah. obviously, we talk about Watership Down, which has still been passed as a U right as, as recently as 2013, the same year Frozen came out. And I just don't get how they haven't bumped it up to a freaking PG. But of course, 
the anime film Akira, which when that came out, uh, it, it's 1988 in Japan. It may have taken until 1991 to come out in, in Britain. That got passed out of cinema, uncut with a 12 rating. And that's got some severe violence in. It's got a, a rape scene. I think it's only, well, attempted rape scene. It's pretty, uh, got some body horror elements. I think the word yeah. fuck is only mentioned once. Yeah. Obviously, it's been 50 in every other submission, but if you yeah, want to give yeah, an example of how lenient <laughs> Furman is on Furman was on animation, that's your mm. exa- example. Yeah, it was, it was a big example. And it's, it's also surprising how, how, le- how, how unusually lenient PG used to be. I mean, Indiana Jones... Indiana Jones? Hello? Yeah, so Indiana Jones, you said? Yeah, yeah, and also, um, and also, Death on the Nile. That was, that's a surprisingly violent PG. I, I was amazed. I mean, it even even in its edited form, it's violent. I mean, there's a scene where a woman's throat's cut. There's a scene in which people are shot with blood spurts. There's, there's even a scene of suicide, and it's not even off screen. It's it's on screen. So, yeah, need I say more? Well, no. I mean, again, that was a. Uh... Oh, you you mean the original Death and Nile back in yeah, 78? Yeah. Again, yeah. I guess people back then expected a bit more edge. I mean, mm. I mean, because back then you had the uh, the U, the A, the double A, and the and the X, and of course, stateside you had the uh, was would have been PG as well. But um, obviously, when PG first came out, like uh, replacing the the A rating, it was expected not necessarily as a kids' film, but as a fam family film uh, and without the 12 rating in between especially the 12a rating i guess you did have to uh, get away with quite some sure you had a you did have radius of a lost dark where you did see those uh, guys the nazis uh, fell face melting yeah. uh, <laughs> there was also the last crusade where uh, the uh, other nazis sort of just rots uh, in real time yeah it just sort of disintegrates I... yeah we can't really that... mention we can't really say, uh, re- sorry, Temple of Doom, because as we all know, that was heavily cut for its PG. Yeah, that's also, it, oddly, that's my favourite one. I don't like that one very much. Uh, I'm more about Raiders. But, you know, you like what you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've... Well, you've also got, um, oh, you've also got Amadeus. That yeah, is a, not... um... yeah, that's an example, because the extended version of that, that was uh, R-rated in America, but yeah, I got away with PG over here. And I think it's because one word of the... There was, like, apparent use of the word cunt, which the MPAA picked up on, but the BBFC didn't. Yeah, and no, I think, I think it's, it's, also, it's probably also due to a scene of uh, nudity where a basically a woman takes her clothes off. Um, mm, and, bizarre. Yeah. And so... You can obviously see why the MPAA would be more stringent at, at well, that time. Well, we've all, they've always had a reputation for being like that regarding to sexual uh, sexual matters. That's yeah. for uh, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, I well, mean that's uh, but then that's the MPAA, and that's uh, an entirely different kettle of fish. Yep. Yeah, and of course, I mean under the. Uh, Thumb of Jack Valenti, so he's another person that we uh, we talk about. But we're talking about uh, Mr. Furman now, uh, which is weird because when I used to hear at um, any interview with James Furman, he used to be like speak very negatively of censorship and of telling people uh, mm. what they can and can't watch, and um, even say like, "Well, we cut demand more cuts for violence at 18 than any other uh, first what any other." A developed world um, uh, ratings board. It's like, well, if you're against this stuff, why are you fucking doing it, right? I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe stop acting like a dick. You find most people actually prefer it if you yeah. did treat the adults like adults. And, um, and although to let be honest, stuff... I, I I know this this might sound a bit disparaging, but it's probably good that we had him rather than someone like uh, 
Ahem, Thatcher. Well, I mean, or yeah. White House. Yeah. Oh, so, well, what? She had it her way. We wouldn't get to watch anything. Mm, yeah. I mean, t- to be honest, we uh, like films like Joker would be banned entirely. We'd yeah. be, we'd be fucked. We just. Oh, good. Yeah. I mean, but, let's face it. Under Furman, Joker would have been an eighteen. There's no two ways. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. there's no I mean, two ways. To be about honest, that. it probably would have been eighteen rated if it was released in like two thousand and eight. Let alone the eighties. Uh, possibly. Well, I mean, it might have got way of a fifteen in in two thousand eight. Remember, that's the same year that yeah. the Dark Knight came out was passed uncut with a P, with a twelve A. So. Uh, yeah, that chestnut. So I mean, we've uh, it's probably it is worth it is true to say form that uh, ever since Furman has left, the BBFC have just chillaxed so much. It was almost because yeah. I saw the Dog Soldiers, which came out in O two or O one, I think, and of course yeah. that got away of an uncut fifteen rate. It's like yeah, Furman would have slapped that of an eighteen if he slapped um Alien and Aliens and Predator with eighteens. Which, looking back at it, just seems so ridiculous. It's like, yeah, that would have gone eighteen. Yeah. Well, weirdly, what for? And here's a bit of a linking with Furman's weird reasoning here. The only reason Alien got a fifth, a, sorry, an X rating, is because apparently it had too much sexual imagery. I mean, come yeah, on. I'd heard about did, that. Did you, did you not notice the chest bursting scene? That would probably be a bit of a better reason to pass something like that at X. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, I suppose it's, I don't know if it was that grim. I reckon a double A could have probably handled it at the to- time. But yeah, I think yeah. I just found that the the monster was, yeah, like you say, quote unquote, too sexy. And it's just, <laughs> they're given a film this X rating in the same category as Friday the 13th for freaking, well, The Exorcist. Just, which a film that really, when you look at it, violence wise, it's pretty tame. Yeah, I mean, uh, Friday the Thirteenth is quite. It's it's almost quite comical. Some of the violence, I guess. Oh yeah, but there's still quite a fair bit of blood and everything in it. More than you'd see an alien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but of course, I mean, I mentioned the Exorcist, and of course, that's a an elephant in the room. We comment. I did mention it earlier, but we kind of yeah. almost got about it because he did allow that to be passed completely uncut uh, at the cinema with an X rating, obviously. So it's not like he officially banned it, but he wouldn't allow it to be released uh, released on video. It just his uh, reason being that the film's notoriety would cause children to seek it out. <laughs> Even the people, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, yeah, really, you really think children are going to want to see something like that? Yeah. Well, I, I mean. mean, I mean if- I- Yes, people challenged it back then. I mean, it, um, what was her name? Um, Carol Topolsky, I, I think, vehemently challenged that decision, basically saying, hey, We have to assume most parents are reasonably responsible. You cannot just ban an entire film, like, but well, basically ban it just because of your irrational fear of children seeking it out. I yeah, mean, I just what's what, 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 what's the reason for that? Was it some something to do with? protecting children or some kind of moral crusade or something? I don't know. Uh, I mean, there, of course, we do have to acknowledge that um, in the 70s and 80s, Mary Whitehouse was still very much around, still very much had, a, had her mob around her, was still very much vocal, just throwing bloody shade at the, at the media and everything. He really had to, and of course, the Daily Mail and all the fucking uh, tabloids just had her uh rat her back and everything and they were just yeah i mean they would mob them if they felt like they weren't uh, being stringent enough so i guess Furman just felt like he had to cow to their pressure and everything thing or yeah, maybe he's just bad in a way cause... yeah that's if they didn't actually believe what bullshit they were spouting anyway i mean which he probably did i mean uh, we can also talk about what happened about the Hungerford massacre. Uh, yeah, he had he had a bit. He obviously had a bit of a tendency to um, have a bit of a knee jerk reaction to um, 
uh, massacres or events or something. I mean, like you had the obviously you also had the um, the murder murder of uh, James Bulger, which oh, Christ resulted in the um, yeah grim story. I mean, horrific. yeah, that was a horrible story, and I think mean, yeah. they tried to put, I mean, they tried to pin it on child play child's play free, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, they they did indeed. And a killer, one of the boys said he didn't even like horror films, so I mean, he'd never seen it. Yeah, yeah. What what reason would you want to go and see something like that when you don't even like horror films, unless <laughs> you were doing some kind of dare? Well, exactly. But, but they were quite young, so I highly doubt that would have happened. But anyway, we digress. Um, well, we can. Well, I mean, when I say digressing, it's very re- it's kind of relevant to what we're talking about. I remember one yeah, uh, yeah. MP at the time tried to get a bill banned that would just forbid any film rated 15 or higher from being released on video. And of oh course, God, yeah, his name um, Jack Straw, and he was he was a Labour MP Jack. as well. I don't think it was Jack. Was it Jack Straw? I think it was someone else. I think it was someone else. I was originally a Lib Dem MP, but then joined the Tories. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, Furman, to his credit, as much credit I could, I could ever give that man, said. <laughs> Well, if we do this, we won't allow films like Schindler's List to be on, uh, to be released on video. And it's just like, and that twat said, um, well, if they can't do it, it's been Child's Play and Schindler's List. What are they doing? It's like, no, mate, this is about films. You don't know if they're about films. So shut the fuck up and go back to shouting in Parliament. <laughs> yeah, go, go, go back to confronting Dennis Skinner, who's a better debater anyway. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah just, uh, well, and, yeah. Uh, well, that, that, that was also the whole thing. I mean, trying to trying to introduce something like the Video Recordings Act in uh, Parliament, I mean, the, the, the stuff people must have been saying about it. And like, this, this shit is rotting our children's brains. <laughs> like, really? I mean, most of them probably, God knows how many of them actually ever bought that uh, stuff anyway. A lot of them just said they'd watch stuff that didn't even exist, just as a mean because they were asked leading questions. Yeah. And the idea of like, oh, it's uh, this is corrupting and depraving people's minds. Well, the BBFC, you're watching this shit all the time. You're watching far more anyone else's <laughs> by your own logic. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah, you, you, you made it your occupation to sit and watch this crap all fucking day long. Like, God, God knows who... I mean, I mean, I'm. I would be amazed if someone didn't like have some kind of PTSD or, or, or whatever after working at the BBFC. I mean, it's it's it seems pretty hard going. If I mean, if you if you're having to watch stuff like I don't know, I spit on your grave, which I, I am Serbian film. Oh God, yeah, films which I am never ever watching. Oh, I'm um, not going to watch that film ever. I don't. I know, yeah. not even in its cut form. I'm just. It just seems like something that's just so fucking wrong. It just, ugh. Yeah. Apart from the fact that it might be interpreted as a feminist film, which, um, yeah, which I, which I can kind of see. Because oh, Spit in a Grave, been. yeah, not Serbian film. No, 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 God, no, God, no. Um, so, yeah, that's, um, that's about the extent of uh, ludicrous reactions in Parliament. But um, I guess one, one other thing we should talk about is his... Um, maybe a final thing, is an interview he did with Barry Norman, which was quite interesting, in which um, both of them were talking about films like Terminator 2, which, of course, is another film that he decided to cut. Um, and surprisingly, Barry Norman was quite like ultra-conservative in his views. I mean, one of the comments he made was something like, well, you've got films like Terminator 2, which... Uh, kind of like it's the kind of violence that the the wake ones like you you know get back up after you've been shot or something and i'm like really do do you are you missing the the subtle implications of the violence because the the whole point of terminator 2 is that he's trying not to kill people after john connor says well why are you just killing everyone (laughs) well yeah Exactly. And of course, like you say, that film was rather heavily cut for its uh, 15 rating. It's now an un- uncut 15. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know if I've, have I seen that, uh, that interview. You uh, might not, but I mean, a lot of people who could bitch about these uh, 
movies, I haven't seen it or I've seen bits of it and totally missed the overall theme of it. So we just cannot, uh, uh, so they cannot uh, com- get a, a proper, uh, a form a proper opinion on it, and just rather just some knee jerk reaction. Um, yeah. So I suppose Furman did have to att- uh, contend with a lot of those people, but you know, I mean, that doesn't really, uh, you know, absolve him of blame of just possibly being one of those dicks in begin with, to begin with. I mean, we talked about his uh, attitude towards nunchucks because you can't talk about Furman without talking about nunchucks. And um, the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles film, which ah. was heavily, heavily cut to remove all sign of uh, Michelangelo's nunchucks, but not, you know, the katana blades, which you can actually cut someone's head off with, but, you know, <laughs> priorities. Yeah, but, yeah. Protect the children. <laughs> but you know, um, that's not that's one thing. But the second one, where they don't even use their weapons at all, it still had to be cut. The scene where, uh, and I know, I think you know where I'm going, and probably loads of people listening to this probably already know where I'm going. It's a scene when fight at the beginning, where Michelangelo picks up a, a string of sausages and uses them as nunchucks, <laughs> and Furman demanded that be cut. Yeah, <laughs> because he thought they were actually nunchucks. When one of the examiners said, no, they're not nunchucks, they're sausages. He's just using sausages as nunchucks. They said, <laughs> well, I thought they were nunchucks and a very streetwise kid would probably also think they're nunchucks too. So they're going to have to be sweet. cut. It's yeah. like, yeah. you fucking prick. Streetwise would have been. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, <laughs> just, um, not a, yeah, he's yeah. not a, you clearly, yeah, the guy was, you do, you do sort of listen to the guy and uh, as time time went on I think the power may have got to his head he is a bit of a loon or was a bit of a loon he, he passed away in 2002 um, but uh, yeah God, I just, it, it just sort of gets to you that like this guy got to control what this country could not couldn't see for nearly a quarter yeah. of a century yeah and at least if you're going to do that you might want to have a slightly more representative board <laughs> yeah. So I guess, well, we, we've sort of covered quite a few things here, but I guess, um, I guess, I guess one final thing is, um, like how how will he be seen in the future? Perhaps will, are we getting more lenient, or are we going to go back to a time like Furman? Well, particularly with the conservatives in power, that will be um, an interesting question to pose. Well, it is okay for well. I mean, obviously, it's very much future for now, as the, uh, because it's been well uh, almost twenty five years since his departure. Oh God, that makes me feel old because there's more times, almost as much time as as passed since he left, seeing it as compared to when he was in when his uh, when he was uh, running the damn place, but. Uh, you know, I mean, you ask most people my age, most people who like our action movies and our horror movies, James Furman is almost like a a, a religious curse, as it were. <laughs> it's yeah, a it's, bad taste in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bit of um, kind of the equivalent to um, the devil in terms of Christianity or or whatever in um, in uh, in you know, the, yeah, the evil spirits. So he he's Voldemort. He's Sauron. He's he who should not be named. I mean, yeah, he's um, he's a, uh, he's uh, okay. I am I am at a loss for words here. But yeah, uh, but anyway. I mean, you talk about like, are we going to get more conservative? I mean, I I can't imagine we're going to go back to his days. I mean, I have been a little bit alarmed by an increasing number of eighteen rated films that I've got out rather than because I'm pretty certain they would have got away of 15s like say 10 years ago I mean yeah. Halloween and it's Halloween Kills the new Scream film was like no nah, that that would have got away with a 15 back in the day back in say circa 2010 or something at least I, I, I think it would I mean I suppose there might be some images of um, what's it some images of injury which might push it beyond but so I want to have uh, I would have thought so. So yeah, I'll be concerned about that. Obviously, there's still some films that they're not allowing to be completely uh, uncut or even released at all. Like, as you mentioned, I Spit on Your Grave, which is still a cut, and I don't know if it ever will be uncut. 
Yeah, indeed. That's um, that's one that they that, that they're probably not gonna budge on. But it's um, it I mean, to be honest, probably not like we're missing out on much because uh, apparently. Well, it's we bit... can. Well, I mean, if you want to watch it uncut that badly, I'm pretty certain you can watch it online. The BBFC don't have any uh, um, have any control there. Yeah, but they. I mean, to be honest, they probably might in some in some way in the future, which is a. That's really concerning. That is quite concerning yeah, to me. Like I say, I mean, effects. one of the good thing, one of the advantages the Americans do have. I mentioned this in our previous uh, uh, previous podcast was that America's First Amendment protects um, films from being uh, having mandatory uh, ratings added to them. So while the MPA have their problems, they can't officially ban something. Whereas, yeah, not having a First Amendment here, but you can get films like the Video Recordings Act. Um, we're just sort of uh, hoping that it won't ever. Uh, be extended to the, the internet. Although how the BBFC would ever actually monitor what's on the internet anyway, because there'll always be a ways around that. Yeah, there, w- there will always be like a ways around that. Uh, so yeah, that's the, I, I guess that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for listening to this edition of the podcast. Um, hopefully next time we can uh, finally touch on contemporary BBFC issues. Um, Thank you very much, Rob, for being here. And Happy to be here. Absolutely. Thank you. And um, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, well, uh, all right. Well, have a good day and stay safe. And I'll...